Hello, welcome to part two of my Cutthroat Caverns video review series. In part two, I'm going to show you exactly what Cutthroat Caverns looks like when it's played. I'm going to set the game up for a three-player game and go for probably at least through two monsters, depending on the time frame. So you get an idea of how the game plays. Now, unfortunately, Cutthroat Caverns does play with closed hands. It'd be pretty much impossible for me to play three closed hands without at least looking at them. So I'm going to have the hands shown as open play hands. But I think you'll still get a really good idea of just how Cutthroat Caverns plays. Now, since I'm setting up for a three-player game, the four, five, and six initiative cards won't be used, so they're going to be removed. We're going to use the one, two, and three initiative cards. We're going to have the decks. They're going to be shuffled together. Each player is going to get a hand of exactly seven cards, and we need to make sure we pick out three heroes for the players to play. The other three are going to be removed from the game, and then we need to shuffle up which bad guys we're going to get so we can figure out just who we have to fight in this dungeon and escape from. Those will be our nine monsters. We'll take these and put them off to the side just in case the Blood Mage is one of these guys in here. It's a possibility. I don't know yet. Got them all randomized. Each player is going to have their character. Everybody gets to start with 100 life points. Then we'll randomize the initiative cards to see who exactly is going to play in what initiative order. And we will see everybody's initiative. We'll get a hand of seven cards for every player. And we're pretty much ready to begin. I got the game all set up for all of our party members here. It's a three-player game. The initial order is going to show that Nyx is going to go first, Vasha is going to go second, and finally Talon is going to be a third player for our very first combat round. Fortunately, Talon managed to grab one item. It's going to be a potion of healing in his first seven cards, so that's going to go immediately to the table. Remember, green items go to the table. They are not played from your hand. They go to the table immediately. Nyx is going to get the Alchemist Fire. Now, the Alchemist Fire is one of the very few magic items that can actually be used during a combat round, so that's a very good item to keep on hand. And Vasha starts with no items, but the bonus of not starting with any items is they actually get a full deck of seven cards. Remember, if you draw a card that's an item, you don't get a card to replace it. It goes to the table, and you get to start with a smaller hand. So that's kind of the bonuses and the disadvantages of starting with items. They can help you, and sometimes they can hinder you. Now that everything's set up, we can go ahead and start the game. The first thing we knew, need to do is flip over the encounter and figure out exactly what we're going to be fighting and get his hit points set up. The first monster we're going to fight is Axe. Now Axe is a creature who's going to be worth two prestige points to whoever manages to land the killing blow to him. Since we're only playing a three-player game, he's only going to have 100 hit points, but that's more than enough to make him just a little bit of a nasty creature, especially because of his special power. Axe is actually a pretty tough monster to fight in a three-player game. In a six-player game, he's not quite so bad, but in a three-player game, he can be pretty nasty, especially if he's not taken out quickly. Because what Axe is going to do when we get to the point where Axe gets to attack, he's actually going to attack the player with the number two initiative card for 20 points of damage, and then the player sitting to the left and to the right of that person is each going to take 10 points of damage each. That pretty much guarantees that in a three-player game, every single round that Axe is left alive, he's going to hit every one of our party members. Now, in a six-player game, that can be divvied up pretty nicely and help spread the damage out. But in a three-player game, Axe becomes extremely deadly. That's why he only starts with the 100 hit points versus a six-player version, which has 240 hit points. We're on the very first encounter. He has 100 hit points. And again, whoever beats him is going to get two prestige points. It's now time for our players to pick out which attack card they're going to go ahead and set down for the be their attack card for the round. And then we can go ahead and get started with everything. Each player gets to place their one attack card face down from their hand. And then once every player has decided which card they're going to set down, that is the recited card, we go ahead and move through the initiative. We go ahead and start with the very first person who is Nyx, who is on the initiative card number one. They're going to reveal their initiative card. Actually, before they do that, they're going to ask if any player wants to play a blue card to cancel this attack before it's revealed. None of the players want to do that quite yet, so Nyx is going to go ahead and reveal their card. And they're going to play a card that says, I think they called you Ugly too, which does five points of damage. Now, the nice thing about this card is as soon as you play it, if another player doesn't counter this attack at all, Nyx gets to decide who Axe gets to hit for 20 points of damage, and everybody else is going to take 10 points of damage, because remember, we're playing a three-player game, and Axe is going to hit three players every single round. Kind of a nice, tricky early card to get out, but it guarantees that Nyx is only going to take 10 points of damage instead of the early 20 points of damage. Unfortunately, for the other players, nobody has an action card they can play to cancel this, so this card is going to go into the damage stack. And then Nyx gets to decide which one of the other players are going to be the target of Axe's Wrath. Nyx is going to go ahead and pick 
Vasha, who's actually going to be the target. So Vasha, we already know, no matter what her initiative card is at the end of this round, she's going to be a target of 20 points of damage, and everybody else is going to be hit with 10 points of damage due to the Axis special ability. That's the end of the first initiative card. We now move to the second initiative card, which is going to be Vasha, and she gets a chance to reveal her card. Before she does, she asks if any player wants to play an action card, a blue card, to cancel her attack before she does. Nobody wishes to do so, so she's going to go ahead and reveal her attack, and she's going to play Stab and Grab. So far, it looks like all of our players are out for blood pretty early in the game. Stab and Grab is a pretty cool card. What it does is, while it doesn't do a lot of damage, if it manages to make it to the damage stack without being canceled by another player playing a card, whoever plays the Stab and Grab card gets to take an item from another player, and they're now the new owner of that item. Now, Nyx doesn't really like that idea because Nyx knows that their Alchemist Fire is pretty tempting to take by Vasha because it can pretty much guarantee her to hurt other players. And Vasha might want a little bit of revenge versus Nyx because Nyx is going to make sure Vasha is getting hurt this round. Or Vasha could even take this Potion of Healing. And, of course, Nyx really doesn't like that idea because eh, Nyx is mean. So Nyx is going to go ahead and play a card called Critical Miss, which is going to actually cancel Vasha's attack. Now, Critical Miss is very, very nasty because not only is Vasha going to miss with this card and not get the bonus benefits of this card, they're also going to take 10 points of damage because not only is it a miss, it's a Critical Miss, and if you read the card, it actually says they also take 10 points of damage. Unfortunately, Vasha doesn't have anything they can do to counter this, so they're going to have to grin and bear it, take 10 points of damage, and unfortunately, this card is not going to have an effect, so both these cards are going to go to the discard pile. And now Vasha is definitely kind of angry at Nyx. Now there are cards, some action cards, that actually cancel another action card. Unfortunately, Vasha doesn't have any of those, so she's pretty much stuck taking the effects here. We now move on to the third initiative card, which is going to be Talon. Before Talon takes his action, he needs to see if anyone wants to play an action card to cancel his attack. Nobody's going to do it, so Talon gets to reveal his attack, and he's going to be doing 40 points of damage unless somebody around here can cancel this. None of the players wishes to do so, so this 40 points of damage is going to be added to the damage stack. We're going to compare the total amount of damage so far, 45 to the 100, and see it's not enough to take Axe out. So, it looks like Axe is going to get to beat on our players just a little bit this round. All of our players have taken their attacks. No other players can do any other actions this round unless they have an action card that allows them to do so. We're now going to move on to the second part of the round where we handle the monsters part of the initiative. The first thing we need to do is we need to add up all the damage that Axe is going to take. We're going to have 5 damage plus 40 damage for a total of 45. It's going to bring Axe down to 55 hit points. Not quite dead and it's not going to defeat him. Now we need to look at what kind of attack Axe has. Now remember there's initiative attacks or special attacks. Any card that says they target a special initiative is an initiative attack. Otherwise it's going to be a special attack. Axe says that he's going to attack the player who has the number 2 initiative card. So it's not a special attack. So we can go ahead and discard these cards. We don't need to worry about them. And then we can go on to Axe's attack portion of the round. So before we can resolve Axe's initiative attack, all the players need to do a new initiative hand. Now actually, technically it really doesn't matter for the simple fact that no matter which player gets the number two card, because of the card that was played by Nyx, which is going to make the target they choose be the victim of the attack, we know that... Vasha is going to be the one who is going to be attacked, but we still need to draw initiative to see in what order the cards are going to be played and resolved by the next players. So it looks like Nyx actually had the great strategy earlier. Normally Nyx would take all the damage here, but it's going to be Vasha. So Axe's special attack goes off. Vasha is going to take 20 points of damage going from 90 down to 70. Nyx is going to go from 190 and Talon's going to go from 100 to 90. It's in the combat round, and now each player gets to draw one card and add it to their hand. And then we get to start a new combat round. Now, of course, this is when a little bit of the strategy comes in. We see that the monster only has 55 hit points left, and whoever lands the killing blow on the monster is going to get the prestige points. Players need to judge the action cards in their hand, see how much they can screw with the other players, and judge their place in the initiative, and that's the kind of action cards they want to make sure they're playing on this round. So every player is going to play an action card. Hopefully, their strategy is going to pan out for them. All the players have laid down their action cards. Now we need to resolve the actions in initiative order. Now before we play or reveal any of these action cards, Vasha had a little bit of a strategy because Vasha unfortunately didn't have any really good attack cards. Without revealing, just to show you, Vasha, the best attack card she had was an attack 10. So she luckily has a card to help her with this. So she's going to go ahead and play a card called Mixed Signals. Mixed Signals allows you to swap any unrevealed action card with your own unrevealed action card 
and that now becomes your new action card, or your, I should say your attack card, before the reveal phase. So Vasha has a little bit of a vendetta against Nyx, so she's going to go ahead and switch her card with Nyx in the hopes that Nyx was hoping to play a really powerful attack card, just enough to take out the monster, and Vasha's going to hope that strategy works out just right for her. So this card is going to go ahead and be used, and it's going to be discarded, and it's done, and its action is done, and now we move over to the first initiative player. So Vasha gets ready to reveal her attack card, but before so, Talon decides to say not so fast and decides to play Edge Out. Edge Out means that this card isn't even revealed and this player's attack doesn't even happen at all. It's removed and now Vasha gets to be very upset because she doesn't get to do anything and she's pretty sure she's not going to get any prestige for this fight because she just lost her entire attack. And unfortunately Vasha doesn't have any action cards to cancel it, so she's pretty much stuck suffering the effects of the card played by Talon. So we go and move to the second initial player, ask if anyone wants to play any cards before they reveal. Nobody does so. So they're going to go ahead and reveal, and they're going to have a 10 attack card, which isn't that much. But at least it's enough to do a little bit of damage, and then everybody else gets an opportunity to play any cards to cancel that if they wish. None of the other players have any action cards they can use to cancel this attack, or at least they don't have any they wish to play. So this card is going to go ahead and be added to the damage stack. Now Nyx has the option of using the Alchemist Fire for an additional 30 points of damage. Unfortunately, 30 plus 10 is not going to be enough to do the 55. It's probably only going to do one thing, and that's guaranteed that Talon gets the killing blow. So Nyx is going to go ahead and hold on to the Alchemist Fire just for this round. Maybe it'll come into better use at a later time. That's the end of Nyx's round. We now move to Talon's play turn, who gets a chance to reveal their action card. Of course, before they do so, they need to make sure nobody else wants to play an action card to cancel their attack. Nobody wishes to do so, so they're going to reveal and they're getting a 40 point damage attack. Nobody has any cards to counter it, so it's gonna be added to the damage stack, and all of our heroes have attacked. 50 points of damage isn't quite enough to take out our bad guys, so unfortunately, that's gonna end all of our players' turns. That's gonna end the combat round for the players. We're now gonna move over to the monsters part of the combat round. We have a total of 50 points of damage, so the ax is gonna take 50 points of damage. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough to defeat him. He's gonna have five hit points left over. And again, since he doesn't have a special attack, we can go ahead and discard these cards now. We don't need to leave them out. And now it's time to figure out the initiative for the next round. And we need to figure out who's going to be hit by the axe. Each player gets a brand new initiative card. We're going to figure out just exactly who is going to get hit by the axe. Now remember, the axe is going to attack whoever has the initiative number two card. So the axe is going to hit Talon for 20 points of damage, bringing him from 90 all the way down to 70. Nyx is going to be hit for 10 damage, going from 90 down to 80. And then Vasha is going to go from 70 down to 60. But Vasha has a card she's going to go ahead and play. Vasha is going to go ahead and play a card called Counter-Strike. And it says that immediately after you are the target of damage from a creature, you get to draw a card and then play two cards and treat it as a brand new attack. That's going to happen before anybody else has attack. None of the other players have an ability to counter this Counter-Strike, unfortunately, so Vasha is going to go ahead and get two attacks, one for five damage, one for 25 points damage, which is more enough to go ahead and defeat the Axe. The Axe is now defeated. We're not going to move to the next combat round, and Vasha gets the two prestige points for defeating the Axe. And we don't even need to start a new combat round. This combat round's over, this combat is over, and now it's time to figure out who the next baddie is we get to fight. Before we start the next encounter, though, each player needs to discard cards if they wish to. Draw their hand all the way up to seven cards again. And then once everybody has their hand of seven cards, we simply just advance the round marker down to the number two. And then we get to start a brand new encounter and figure out just who our next monster is in the dungeon. Of course, don't forget that if you happen to draw an item, you need to make sure you play it down face up on the table. It looks like Talon managed to get a potion of strength. Looks like Nyx happened to get a Potion of Haste, and Vasha is getting a little bit of luck coming her way now. She managed to get the Potion or the Amulet of Mentalism. Amulet of Mentalism allows her to draw two cards, raising her max hand size all the way up to a total of eight cards. Might give her a little bit of an edge in the future battles here. It's now time to reveal who our next big baddie is going to be, and then we get to refigure out who has got initiative. Looks like our next target is going to be Ripper. We're playing a three-player game, so we see that Ripper has 150 hit points. Set the bar to 150. We're now on the second encounter, and we need to figure out initiative for our heroes. Before the initiative is going to be set, though, each one of our players gets the opportunity to use any potions they have in their possession. 
and we're going to go ahead and start with Talon. He's going to go ahead and use the Potion of Healing. Now, one thing I don't think I described in the tutorial for the game is that all these potions are one-time use only. Once they are used, they are not put in the discard pile. They are actually removed from the game, which makes the game much, much harder as the game goes on. Now, these potions and items can be stolen between the players, so you got to be very careful about that. But once they are used, they are removed from the game, and they are not put in the discard pile. They're basically gone for good. So the potion of healing that Talon used is going to heal them for 25 points of damage. And the reason why they're using this is because, well, two reasons. One, they're hurt, and two, they don't want stolen by another player. So they're going to go from 70 hit points back up to 95 hit points. They have a potion of strength. They could use it if they wanted to, but no great rush right now. We're only in the second round for the game, so no big rush there. We're going to come over to Nyx. Nyx doesn't have any points, and they're already a target because they have the Alchemist Fire. So they're going to go ahead and use the Potion of Haste. The Potion of Haste says that for the first two calm rounds of the future combat, they can play up to two attack cards face down. So we're going to go ahead and use that to see if we manage to score the kill on the Ripper since he is worth three prestige points. And unfortunately, Vasha doesn't have any potions to use, so we're pretty much done with her. And now we need to figure out the initiative for our players. We're going to figure out that Vasha's third, Nyx is second, and Talon happens to be player number one. We're now ready to start the new combat round. Each player needs to make sure they place one card down, and they're going to set that as their action card for the round. Now remember, Nyx gets to place two cards down because they're using the Potion of Haste, and that's an optional. They do one or two, but they have to put down at least one card. Remember, that isn't the basic rules. You always have to play at least one card every single round, so make sure you're doing that. Then once everybody's got their cards out, we're now ready to start revealing these cards and seeing exactly what's going to happen. Town is player number one, so he needs to reveal his attack card first. Before he reveals, he needs to see if anybody wants to stop his attack from going through. Nobody wants to play a card to stop his card from being revealed, so he's going to go ahead and reveal. And he's going to play the card Focus Strength. Now what Focus Strength says is it's a writer card. And it's going to say that basically you're not going to make an attack this round. You're basically going to be focusing, so you're going to put this card over here on top of your character sheet so you don't forget about it. And then on the next round, you're going to add 30 points of damage to whatever your next attack is. So now that Talon has played this card, they're going to go ahead and take effect to that. But beforehand, Nyx is going to say, not so fast. Now this card is a writer card, which means it's now susceptible to other kind of action cards that cancel writer cards. So Nyx is going to play a card called Unintentional Strike, which is going to make this card not happen instead of it happening. Talon is actually going to end up attacking the Ripper for five whole points of damage. Now Ripper, or I'm sorry, Talon doesn't really like the idea of having their nice little attack card canceled so quickly. So they're going to go ahead and play a card called Not On My Watch, which allows them to cancel any action card that is played. So now these two our cards are canceled out. Anybody gets the opportunity to play more action cards if they wish to. Nobody wishes to, so this little exchange is done. These cards are going to be exchanged, and Talon gets to continue with the Rider card uninterrupted and now we can move on to Nyx's turn. Nyx has turned to reveal their cards and now since they have two cards they're going to go ahead and reveal them. They're going to reveal Opportunity Fire and a 40 point attack. Opportunity Fire is actually a pretty cool little card. What it allows you to do is it allows you to attack once now and then attack later before another player gets to attack so it's kind of a nice little trick to use especially if you want to hold back an attack where you have a couple really high attack cards and you want to guarantee you have a good shot to kill on the monster. So we're going to go ahead and handle Opportunity Fire first, and what it tells us to do is to draw one card, and then we need to place two cards face down. So we're going to place one card down for the Opportunity Fire, and then we need to decide who this card is going to go before, or who's going to interrupt their action by this card play before them. We're going to take this card, and we're actually going to play it so we'll make sure it happens before Talon gets his attack off next round. Our objective, or at least our thought process here for the next player, is since he's going to hit so hard on the next round, we want to hope that we get the kill before he has a chance to do anything. So we're going to go ahead and reveal this card, and we're going to have a 30-point attack and a 40-point attack, unless somebody wants to mess with these cards at all. And it looks like Vasha, still with a little bit of Vendetta versus Nyx, wants to play some more cards. Vasha is going to go ahead and play one of these action cards, which is actually a card that has two ways to be played. It can be played as tougher than it looks, or it can be played as not so tough. Basically, the difference between this is as not so tough is going to make you get to pick an attack card and it's going to be doing double damage, or you can play as tougher than it looks and you can take one of these cards and half the damage. So Vasha is going to do something which may seem a little bit odd, but they're going to play as not so tough to raise this attack from a 40-point attack to an 80-point attack, and you remember there's low numbers showing the total attack value when you rotate these cards. 
So this is going to go to an 80 point attack plus a 30 point attack. Nobody else wants to play any more cards, and these cards can be added to the damage deck. We now have 80 plus 30 for a total of 110 points of damage versus Ripper already. Not enough to kill him, but if we get some good hits in, this may be a quick combat round. It's now Vasha's turn, and Vasha gets to reveal her attack card. With a smug smile, she's going to go ahead and reveal a 40-point attack. Now we see that Ripper has already taken 110 points of damage, plus this 40 is going to be enough to slay Ripper. So unless either one of these players has a way to counteract this card, this combat is going to be pretty quick. Ripper is not even going to attack in, and Vasha is going to get some more prestige points. Unfortunately, much to our other player's chagrin, nobody else has a way to counter this. So this card is going to be added to the attack stack. We have done a total of 150 points of damage. That's actually going to slay Ripper, and Vasha is going to get a second kill in for some more prestige points. And even though Vasha happens to be the most, most hurt and the most picked on, they also happen to be in the lead for prestige points. And since Ripper was defeated before he had a chance to attack any of his players, he's not going to get an attack, and that's actually the end of that fight. We're going to go ahead and discard the cards. Refill all the players' hands back up to seven. Players get a chance to discard cards. Unfortunately, use potions, even if they still had some charges left on them, they are removed. They don't carry over between fights. Only unused potions will carry over. Once everybody's figured out exactly what they want to do for potion use and everybody's got their hands filled back up, we're simply going to reveal the next monster and keep on going, going through defeating all these monsters, making sure we're advancing the encounter track so we remember to get the bonus prestige as we go through. Once we've defeated the final monster, the person with the most prestige is going to be the winner. Of course, the caveat to this is you have to be the one with the most prestige who is still left alive. So the other players, if they want to stop Vasha, they need to make sure that Vasha happens to take a couple licks, gets smacked around a little bit, and happens just to perish, unfortunately, for the rest of the party before the end of the game. I think I've shown you enough so you get the idea of the flow of how Cutthroat Caverns plays. It can go pretty quick. It can also stretch out a little bit, just depending on how much the players want to screw with each other. Three-player games are usually pretty quick. Last only about an hour tops, especially if everybody knows how to play the game and you're pretty much flowing through pretty quickly. Most of the monsters are pretty quick to defeat. There's some that can be a little bit more time-consuming, but that just adds to the variety of the game. I hope you enjoyed the sample gameplay for Cutthroat Caverns. Stick around for part three of my video where I'm actually going to give my full opinion and review of Cutthroat Caverns.